All right, please welcome John up to the stage. Uh, okay, so several years ago, I was uh, broke. I was totally poor. I was at a point where I was having maybe a slice of pizza a day, so I was probably like 30 pounds thinner than I am now. And uh, I went, I would only go to parties that were people's apartments because I was like, oh, there'll be food there and I won't have to pay for it. Um, so I was at one of these parties that I didn't want to go to and I was talking with this guy I sort of knew named Damien and I started talking about how poor and miserable I was. And he said, oh, um, well, would you ever consider hustling? <laughs> he said, because I get a lot of call for redheads and I bet you'd probably do pretty well. Again, 30 pounds thinner. <laughs> um, and uh, I didn't say no. <laughs> and then he said, in fact, I have an appointment for tomorrow night if you want. And then he told me how much it would pay. And I thought, that's a lot of money. And somehow the word sure came out of my mouth. <laughs> and he said, great. And he like wrote down an address on a piece of paper and he handed me, he said, just show up tomorrow at seven. Uh, you, you don't have to stay past nine and uh, he has to give you cab, uh, fare, home, and uh, call me when it's done, and then he says, oh, and take this, and he went to his bag and he took out one of those old credit card machines that you have to like go back and forth. <laughs> and I thought, this really is the oldest profession. Um, <laughs> and then suddenly I had a moment of clarity and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, this isn't gonna be like weird, like he's not gonna ask me to do something like crazy or, or freaky, will he? And he said, no, 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 this guy's really tame and if it gets freaky, you can just leave. He's not gonna be able to stop you. He's in his 60s. <laughs> I was like, I should have seen that coming. Okay, so, um, so the next morning I wake up and I immediately start doing two things, smoking a lot of pot and listening to Tina Turner's Greatest Dance. Because <laughs> I thought she would get me in the right mindset for this. Uh, so. Finally, the time arrives, and I get in a cab, and I go over to his place, and he lives in a basement apartment in Queens. And as I'm walking down the stairs, before I even get to the door, it opens up, and there's a man in his 60s standing there, and uh, he's kind of about this tall, he's bald, he's got like a white mustache, and he's wearing tan pants and a wife beater. And, you know, I walk in, and at first it's all very kind of like uh, normal, I guess you would say. You know, he's like, oh, can I get you anything to drink? I'm like, no, I'm fine. You know, I re run off his credit card. Um, you know, check the expiration date. The signature matches. Okay. Um, and then, you know, uh, I hand his card back, and then immediately he just, like, uh, starts stroking my hair, and he says, oh, you have such beautiful hair. I'm so glad they sent a real redhead this time. <laughs> And I'm like, I wish I knew who the last person I sent to you was. Um, so then he's like, let's go into the bedroom. So we go into his bedroom, and it's a very small room, and it's mostly dominated by his bed, and uh, there's like a little like narrow kind of alleyway around it. And there's like jazz music playing. And after a moment, you know, and there's a woman singing. After a moment, I go, oh, is this Ella Fitzgerald? And he like clasps his two hands in front of his face, and he's like, oh, you know who Ella Fitzgerald is? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And then he like smiles and like sits down on the bed and like looks all like bright eyed. And I'm like, great, he's falling in love with me. <laughs> and so, you know, then he's looking at me like, get started. And so I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so I start like doing this weird, like sexy, seductive strip tease to like Summertime from Porgy and Bess. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't imagine this is turning anyone on. <laughs> and, uh, so I get naked, and, um, and the whole time I'm doing it, he's just like sort of like, sort of breathing heavy and like smacking his lips, and it's like very dry. It's, I could just hear the like. <laughs> and then he goes, lie down on the bed. I want to lick your butt. <laughs> well, it's your money. Um, So I'm face down on his bed and he starts like licking my butt cheek and it honestly feels like someone is smearing like cold glue on my butt. <laughs> and I'm like saying they're like, oh my God, how did my life bring me to this? And then uh, like after a moment, I, there, I feel something licking my head as well. And I like sort of like startled and look up and I see like his cat has come into the room. <laughs> And so, like, when he sees her, he, like, freaks out. And he's like, oh, Charlotte, she's a bad kitty. And, like, that's when this goes from being, like, a David Lynch film to, like, a Benny Hill sketch. 
Like, he starts, like, chasing, like, she, like, jumps off the bed, and he's chasing after her and, like, talking to her, like, yelling at her in, like, the third person, like, she's a bad kitty, and she knows when guests are around, she's supposed to stay in the bathroom. And all the whole time, I'm just, like, lying on the bed with my hand over my mouth, just here, like, da 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 And, like, after a few minutes, he, like, catches her, and he, like, throws her in the bathroom and closes the door, and then, like, he comes back, and he's, like, breathing and, like, panting and breathing heavy and trying to catch his breath. And then just all of a sudden, he just starts bawling. And he just starts crying. And uh, I, I, you know, I'm sort of like, I don't know what to do. And after a moment, I'm like, are you OK? And he just says, no. And he doesn't say anything else. And then he comes, and he sits down on the bed. And I'm just sort of like sitting next to him, like with my hand on his shoulder, like not really sure what to do. And um, he's crying for a while. And then after a while, he's about like 10 or 15 minutes, he stops. And then he goes, uh, I'm sorry, I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything tonight. And then he goes, if you want, I could fuck you with a dildo. I said, I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, and then he says, um, would you mind if we just uh, lay here together for a little bit? And I was like, sure, no problem. So like, we lay down, and thank you. <laughs> And um, like he like puts his head on my chest and like it's like sort of holding me and I put my arm around him and like he wasn't holding me tight but he was holding me in a way that like felt very like desperate and like clingy like he just like he just really like wanted some human like touch or something and he was just was trying to get as much of it as he could in that time um, and so we just lay there for like a little over an hour and then um, finally it was like nine o'clock and I was like all right I have to go and he's like okay. And so, you know, like I got dressed and uh, I was ready to go. And then he just, um, right as I was at the door, he just, he kissed me on the cheek, which was the only time he kissed me the entire time. And uh, he said, you know, thank you very much. Um, and again, he stroked my hair and said, you have really beautiful hair. And I was like, oh, well, thanks. Uh, it's a weird compliment. Um, and so then, you know, like I got in a cab and then like I called this guy and I was like, I don't know if I did it right. Um, he licked my butt and then we cuddled. <laughs> And he's like, oh, that sounds about right. And then he's like, um, so do you want to do any more of this? And I was like, well, can you guarantee it's just cuddling? And he was like, no. And I was like, no, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead then. <laughs> and he's like, all right, stop by tomorrow. And uh, so I went to his place. I dropped off his credit card machine, and he gave me money. And then uh, I treated myself to a nice big meal. Thank you very much.